and this is Great Paintings Episode 1 with City of Parks and Recreation Visual Arts. I'm Brent Thorlton, and today I'm going to go over Rembrandt van Rijn, who was born in Leiden in July 1606 and showed an early inclination to drawing. He was apprenticed at the age of 14 to Jacob van Swanberg, then to Jans Latman, and for a short time to Jacob Pinus. At the age of only 18, he opened his own workshop, which would have been sanctioned by the state at the time. He would have been able to sell work, take students, and sell the student's work as his own. He was a very hard-working art student himself. A dealer once said, by all means he shows great promise as a painter, but he really should get out and live life a little more. The self-portrait which he was apt of doing is one of his early works, when he had struck out on his own from underneath his teacher's style. In this painting you can see a young master of light who's giving us only hints of what goes on in the shadow. They say the heart of the painting is in the light, but the soul is in the shadow. It looks exactly how I would imagine a daylit room with only one light source, an old wood frame window shining a little bit of daylight and an old stone and plaster walls. At the age of only 22, he paints so well and he only has a studio open for four years. Rembrandt painted this little sword portrait in 1626. It's located in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Here we see a 20-year-old Rembrandt standing confidently in front of his easel with a long winter coat and a single brush and palette in hand. The studio is sparse and he's in front of a large painting. The interior self-portrait is about the light moving from one side of the room to the other with a subtle lit edge of the canvas which is only a hint higher in value than the rest of the lights in the painting. Again, we see him simplify his eyes to only two dots, making it appear real and creating space in the picture. This portrait was painted in 1631 for Nicholas Rutz, a German-born Mennonite who lived in Amsterdam. He was a fur dealer who specialized in Russian pelts. Here he's seen holding out a letter with unbelievable writing and wearing a Russian yushanka and his robe also lined in expensive Russian furs. This painting resides in the Frick Museum, and it's one of the best portraits in the world in my opinion. Here the way he handles the fur is breathtaking, and if you see the thumb in person, you will swear it's real. He's also dressed in black. Black fabric at the time was one of the most expensive colors. It was made popular by King Philip of Spain. Black dye came from the longwood tree, only grew in South America. It was brought to Europe mostly by pirates. It was said the legal import of longwood tree only compromised 1% of the longwood dye that was brought to America at the time. All the rest was brought to America by pirates. In this self-portrait, two circles painted by Rembrandt in 1669 at the age of 63. This shows a painter is confident now he's handling light composition. With the brevity that he paints the hand, he shows now he is a true master. I think that the loose brush strokes and geometric background are a call to the future of painting that would take almost 300 years to catch up. The circles harken back to Giotto. When Giotto was asked by a king to show him a sample of his work, he took out a pencil and drew a perfect circle on a piece of paper that could then be traced with a compass. Thank you for watching the first installment of Great Painting Masters. Join us at the City of Tampa Golding Art Studio JCC at 522 North Howard for our monthly and bi-monthly art history lectures that are an ongoing program that are free to the public.